Welcome to Charismatic Evangelistic Ministry, Cape Coast Main Branch, where the undiluted Word of God is preached. Be blessed as you listen to today's sermon by Reverend Henry Danso, the head pastor of Cape Coast Main Branch. Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out men and go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him. And fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass when Moses, when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. Let me read that line again. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat thereon, and Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands. The one on the other side, and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. 13. And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the soul. This is the word of the Lord. Wow. This is a situation that a group of people called the Amalekites who are descendants of Esau fought with Israel. As a matter of fact, we are not told whether Israel did anything wrong for the Amalekites to come and fight with them. They, actually, they didn't do anything wrong. They were there, but the Amalekites said, these people, they are children of God. They, they have blessing. They have, we have to fight them and, and kill them. So that is the genesis of this um, narration here. And uh, so many things happened. So they had to fight at a place called Rephidim. It was a battle between the children of God and the enemies of God. Amen. This morning, our message is titled, Winning the Battles of Life. Winning the Battles of of life. Hallelujah. Winning the battles of life. I'm going to give us some important things to note in this few verses we just read. Amen. Number one, in verse eight, in verse eight, we are told that the Amalekites came and fought with Israel. This is to establish my point number one that we are all engaged in one battle or the other. The first thing you need to note is that we are all engaged in one battle or the other. We are all fighting some battles in life. In fact, before you even came to this world, it was a battle. Are you with me? Yeah. Looking at the process of procreation, that alone, it was a battle. There were about 20 million spares that were released. And one had to meet an ovary one egg in order to form a fetus to become a human being. So right from conception, we were engaged in a battle. 
and and you came out victorious right from your mother's womb. Because uh, about 20 million spermatozoans, they couldn't form you. It was one bit that that linked up with your mother's egg. Your, and, and, and then you came out as a human being. So right from conception, you were engaged in a battle. Others couldn't succeed. So they were wasted something. But you know, you succeeded. That is why you are alive. That is why you are around here. It shows that right from birth, there was a battle. From conception to birth, it's a battle. And you came to this world. And where, when you come into this world, it's a battle. Whether you say amen or not. Life is a battle. Life is a war. Amen. The school you attended right from your childhood stages, it was even a battle. Up to the time you come to a full realization or actualization of yourself, it's also a battle. Even for you to have a self-actualization, it's also a battle. It's a battle, power. Amen. Let me try to go the normal way. You go to school, university, you complete. Now, to get a job is a battle. We, we are not living in a system where everything is okay. Here, to complete school is a battle. When you complete school, getting a job is also another battle. When you get a job and you are working all right, that alone, staying in the job is also a battle. <laughs> yeah. You're a young man, young woman. Now you want to marry. Choosing a life partner is also a battle. But you must win that battle. And you win. You win that battle. Who to choose is a battle. When you are able to choose finally to, the process of marriage is also a battle. If you don't know, ask Brother Francis to tell you his experience. Amen. Even, even when the family of your partner or for your for the for the family of your partner to receive and accept you is also a battle. Yeah. It's a battle. Hmm. When you see the lady there, oh everything is nice. You you conquer that one. But for the family to also accept it's also another battle. When the family accepts you finally going through the traditional it's also a battle. When you do the white wedding or the church one, it's also a battle. When you have taken your wife or your husband to your home, it's also a battle. Staying in the marriage is a, is a battle. After wedding, that is not the end of it. All. The ability to stay in the marriage is also another one. So it's not the day of wedding. Don't know, don't know, don't know. No, no. Actually, people say don't you don't know. You don't know. To stay in the marriage is also a battle. Amen. To have children is a battle. You have no idea. It's also a battle. This is to establish the fact that at every stage, every phase of your life, there's some level of battle you must fight. Don't take things for granted. 
the Israelites where they are, the Amalekites came and fought them. Sometimes the enemy comes to you with that provocation. Not, not that you have done something. You have not done anything. Sometimes in your pain you cry and say, God, what have I done? You haven't done anything. The fact that you are a child of God, the enemy will fight you. Life is a war. It's a battle. Life is more than what meets the eye. Life is more than what meets the eye. Amen? In verse 9, I'm, I'm going to every verse and then I'll make my point, my point clear. In verses 9, we are told that Moses told Joshua, choose for us men and go out and fight with Amalek. Tomorrow, I will stand on the top of the hill with the staff or the rod of God in my hand. Hallelujah. Life is more than what meets the eye. Whereas Joshua was to choose soldiers to go and fight physically, Moses was telling Joshua that, listen, this battle is more than what meets the eye. You can choose the soldiers and meet the enemy at the battlefield. But I am going to the mountain top with the staff or the rod of God to pray. Because the battle is more than physical. Are you with me? The battles of life are more than what meets the eye. Don't take battles physically. Don't take some of the struggles physically. Some of the times, or most of the times, or more of the times, it is spiritual. So for, more, for Joshua, it is sword for sword. It is boot for boot. But Moses had a deeper understanding. So he said, you go with soldiers, but I'm going to the mountain top. Friends, sometimes the struggles we are going through is more than what meets the eye. It is not just ordinary. It is not just physical. That is why you don't have to take things for granted. That is why you need to understand the rules of engagement as far as winning the battles of life are concerned. Most of the time, it is spiritual. Most of the time, some of the wars, some of the battles we are engaged in, most of the times are spiritual. And you can't fight spiritual battle with physical soldiers. Joshua was fighting a spiritual war with physical soldiers. Moses said, yeah, you go with it, but I'm going to the mountain top. Friends, I came to, to challenge you to go into the closet of prayer. Hallelujah. Remember, this year is our year of prayer. It's still our year of prayer. And we are still praying. The reason every lady you propose to within seconds or minutes or weeks or days or months, the relationship doesn't last. You, 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 you think it's just ordinary or it is accidental or incidental or coincidental. No. There's a spiritual side to the whole show. Amen? I came to challenge you to stop looking at the causes of certain things that you don't understand. Most of the times, it is a spiritual battle. Am I making sense? Then in verses 10, the Bible says, whenever Moses 
held up his hand, Israel prevailed. But whenever his hands become tired, then the enemy was advancing or winning the battle. Amen. Now, before I get to verses 11, let's, let's go back to verse 9 again. We are told that Moses instructed Joshua to go to the battlefield with the soldiers. I want to make a, a third point from that before we move to 11. So the third point I'm saying is that get the wisdom to plan your life. Amen. Get the wisdom to plan your life. Because in as much as some of the battles are spiritual, sometimes it is also lack of planning. The reason Moses told Joshua to get the soldiers to go to the battlegrounds is that you, yes, it is spiritual, but when it comes to the physical, you must have plan in place. When it comes to the physical, you must have your, your life in a good plan, orderly manner. Are you with me? So where soldiers must meet soldiers, there must be a plan. There must be, you must have that wisdom to have soldiers to meet the, the soldiers of the enemy. Sometimes our failure to plan our lives ends us in struggle and defeat. We must plan our lives. Get the wisdom to plan your life. To win the battle of, of life, one of the things you need to get is to get wisdom to plan your life. Are you with me? Plan your life that you know that from here to here, you are going this way. You are going this direction. Hallelujah. Don't just be there. What did I say? Don't just be there. Say you are there. I'm waiting for the Lord. Papa Steve said that sometimes the Lord is also waiting for you. You, you are just dead. Don't just be dead. Have a plan. Amen. Have a plan. Plan your life. Sometimes we fail to plan. And that is why we are not able to progress. We are still at the same place. At the commenter. At the pronoun. Because we have failed to plan. Am I communicating? Have a plan for your life. Have a plan for your children. Have a plan for your academics. Have a plan for your marital life. Have a plan for your relationship. Have a plan. That from here, we are going this way. If you are here, you are dating any guy, and, and you ask the guy, what's the plan forward from here? And the guy say, oh, God, God, God will do it. End that relationship today. In Jesus' name. It means that that man doesn't have any plan. There's no vision to follow. You go and, and shipwreck your life. Ask the lady from here, where are we going? What's the, what's the, next, what's the next step? And most irresponsible guys, when ladies ask them, they say, oh, they say, oh we are there, we are there, we are there. I mean, we are waiting for things to happen. Things to happen. Things will never happen until you make things happen. That is why Moses instructed Joshua that get the soldiers, choose. Don't, don't just be there. Even the soldiers choose. Someone say choose. Don't just allow all the soldiers to go to the battle. Choose. 
course of planning, a course of strategy. Are you with me? To effect whatever. Choose. Don't get most 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 Christians are just there. And they say we are waiting on God. You are waiting on God for what? So if God comes right now, what what is your plan? What is your vision? If God should come down right and ask you, so what is your plan in life? Are you going to say, I was waiting for you all this while. So now that you are here, tell me what to do. Tell me what to do. God should tell you what to do. No. You should know what to do from here. Number four. And that's why we are reading verse 11. 11. Anytime the hands of Moses were up, Israel prevailed. Hallelujah. Now, this is metaphoric. Hallelujah. The, the lifting up of Moses' hands, it wasn't just giving a wave offering. It stands for prayer. He went to the mountain top with the rod of God. Lifted up his hands. And any time he lifted up his hands, Israel prevailed against the enemy. But any time he let down his hands, because sometimes when you lift up your hands for some minutes, you get tired and you want to bring it down. And any time his hands came down, the enemy was prevailing against the children of God. It's a very serious thing. Amen. So number four, what I'm saying is that keep your hands up in prayer consistently and persistently. Hallelujah. Keep your hands up in prayer consistently and persistently. Don't faint in prayer. If you if you win the battles of life, sweetheart. You cannot relent on prayer. You need to pray. You need to pray in the morning. You need to pray in the afternoon. You need to pray in the evening. You need to pray at night. You need to pray at midnight. You need to pray at dawn. You need to pray when you are bathing. You need to pray when you are driving. You need to pray when you are brushing your teeth. You need to pray when you are eating. You need to pray when you are doing anything. Pray at all times. That is why the Bible says, pray without ceasing. Amen. Muslims pray five times a day. Jews pray three times a day. Christians shouldn't pray. We should pray at all times. We should pray unceasingly. You, you got to pray every time. Every, every hour is prayer hour. Are you with me? When you are in the kitchen cooking, pray. Hallelujah. When you are scrubbing in the bathroom, pray. When you wake up in the morning, pray. In the afternoon, pray. Anytime, anything you are doing, pray. Pray in every activity you are doing, pray. When you are sitting in the throat row, pray. When you are, when you are sitting in Pragya, pray. When you are going to Kumasi in the bus, pray. When you are going to Accra in the bus, pray. Keep praying. Keep praying. Pray consistently and present. Let prayer become your lifestyle. Pray. pray. Keep your hands up in prayer. It will bring you victory. It will bring you victory. It will bring you victory and success. So don't just retire at the position. Now you have been promoted. You have become a uh, general manager of Ekem, whatever company. So, ah, general manager, and you are enjoying the benefits. You are on the seat, general manager. That's all. You wake up, poor. You go to your office. Do you know that things are going even on your office seat? 
That's why we have to pray at all times. Otherwise, you're going to become a victim of lies. Pray at all times. Tell somebody sitting, pray at all times. Pray consistently and persistently. Consistence is the word. See, anytime the hands of Moses came down, the enemy, but when, as long as his hands were up, as long as prayer is going up, you are winning the battles of life. As long as you keep praying, you will win the battles of life. When you stop praying, you will see that things become busy, busy, bizarre. When, when you relent in prayer, you will see that things will fall apart. Chino Achibi. The center cannot hold. For us Christians, prayer is our weapon. That is why the other day Paul said that the weapons of our warfare are not physical. The word Canada says physical. The weapons of our warfare are not physical. They are not AK-47. Our, our weapons are not kitchen knife. I, I, am I saying something? <laughs> our weapons are not... <laughs> our weapons are spiritual. And one of such is prayer. Amen. Is somebody disturbing you in the office? Pray. Amen. Is somebody choking you? Pray. Pray on him. Pray on her. Don't meet the person physically and exchange words and say, I will, I will, I will, I will listen. Oh. Our weapons are not physical. Don't quarrel with the person. That's why. So if somebody, even in this, if somebody says bad things about me or something, I, I will not quarrel with you. Because my weapons are spiritual. Amen. I won't come and attack you. What did, I heard you say this thing about me. I will not. That means that I've got the battle to physical realm. The battle is spiritual. Learn to fight spiritual. Learn to use the proper weapons for your battles. Stop attacking people verbally. Are you with me? Stop quarreling with people. As a Christian, stop quarreling with people. It is not good for a child of God to quarrel. It's not good for you to quarrel, to exchange words with somebody. If somebody does something that goes against you, go on your knees and pray. Because the weapons of our warfare are not physical. They are spiritual. Number five. We see in verse 12, verse 12, the Bible says, that Moses' hands were heavy and they took a stone and put it under him and he sat thereon and Aaron and Hor stayed up his hands, the one on the other side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. Hallelujah. That last part says that his hands were steady. The hands of prayer were steady. They, they stayed up. Until the going down of the sun. Some theologians have calculated that from the time the hands of Moses were up until the going down of the sun was about 18 hours. Yeah. 18 hours. Others, others fix the hours at 12 hours. So in between 12 and 18 hours, the, it shows the the, the, the level of prayer the, the number of hours in prayer it shows the consistency and the persistency in prayer it shows the, 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 the inner tenacity to, to, to still fight on Joshua was on the battlefield physically but the battle was being won spiritually by the hands of Moses 
on that hill until the going down of the sun. Between 12 and 18 hours, the man's hands were up. Because if he let his hands down, the enemy will advance and prevail over the children of God. So he needed to stay up his hands for those number of hours. Because you prayed last year and it didn't work, you have stopped praying. Number five, pray long prayers. Or better still, pray more. Pray more. Amen? What did I say? Pray long prayers. Pray more. Pray long prayers. Spend time. Spend time. Pray long prayers. Not short prayers. Not the type of prayer when you get fufu and abem pray. No, when you get fufu and abem pray, you start all the time to pray long prayers. That one is simple prayer. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. That battle is won with simple prayer. <laughs> the battle of Ufu and Abempa. That one, blessed, bless. Father, we thank you for this man. Bless it in Jesus' name. And begin the battle. You conquer it with ease. Amen. That is not the time to pray long prayers. That they have served you with Ufu and Abempa. And you are praying for 12 hours. Before you eat, it's a, mis- it's a misplaced prayer. Amen. But there are battles that demand us to pray long prayers. What you're going through, what you're going through, you know what you are going through. That is, that is why you shouldn't be praying just five minutes and, and, and then that is all for the day. You need to do hours of prayer a day because you know that the battle you are faced with is not a joke. Are you with me? Check your family. You can see what is happening from the, from the background. That is not the time to pray uh, um, daily bread prayer. Do you know daily bread prayer? Those books that we use for devotionals. See that after you then they rise up. Dear our Heavenly Father, as the day is breaking forth, show us your glory throughout the day in Jesus' name. Amen. And that is all for, for the day. Christian, you know the kind of battle you are engaged in. What the farmer now, why? You have, you have written 39 applications in one week. You are still not getting job. And you are praying, dear Lord. Written prayer. A prayer that somebody wrote in 18th century. That is your prayer. No. You have to get crazy. Tell somebody you have to get crazy. Look, if you know the kind of battle you are faced with, you got to get crazy. Give yourself hours each day. Are you with me? And have time with God. Hours. Some pray 18 hours. You, how many hours are you praying? Jesus told his disciples, so couldn't you pray for even one hour? When he went to the mountaintop to pray, he came back and he found that his disciples were snoring. Peter was having an an unsum falling. Jesus was surprised. He said, guys, guys, so all these years you have been with me, I've taught you, you couldn't even pray for one hour. Do you know what is ahead? The enemy has turned up the hearts of the Roman soldiers. They are coming after your master. And you are here dozing and snoring. You have no idea what is coming after you. You don't use one and a half minute prayer to counteract a major demonic attack. Sure. Do you know Jesus? I mean, if I were Jesus on earth, I would even have prayed. But Jesus, the Bible said that a great while in the morning he will rise up and go to the mountaintop and pray. It was his 
character. It was his lifestyle. Jesus, when he was about to choose 12 apostles out of his disciples, the Bible said that he spent the whole night praying. And even, the, even when Jesus had spent the whole night praying, he chose 12. One of them was a devil. Jesus, Jesus chose 12. Yet one of them was what? A devil. Prior to choosing, he prayed all night. And he chose 12. And out of the 12, one was Judas. Betrayer. Jesus. How much more you and I? When we are choosing, we, we, we don't pray. When we are choosing, we just look at physical features. Or buy or buy a or Coca Cola shape bar. This is a woman with enough whatever. You choose based on physical. You have not you have not even prayed because the woman has enough breasts, so it is making you crazy. Your your head is going banana 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 banana. banana. No wonder. Our relationships don't last. Our marriages don't last. Divorce rate is high because we don't pray. It's a major decision in your life. And then you are, you are, you are just looking at, hey, maybe no height. Height. Is it height you are going to eat? Oh, I like broad chest. Oh, you left him so. So you left him. That change you will be no. You want choose here? Biceps. It's all about biceps. It's all about six packs. It's about praying to know God's mind. To, to, to win the battles of life. You will win the battle, but you must engage in the, in the rules that governs the battle. Otherwise, you are not going anywhere. So pray and pray more. Pray and pray more. Hallelujah. You are, you, are, you, are, you are believing God to get married. Pray. You are believing God to marry. Pray. When you, when you get married, don't also settle for marriage. Don't say, ah, the motion massacre. No. Still pray. Because even to maintain it, even to maintain the marriage, you, you think everybody is happy that you are married. You have to maintain the prayer level. Because marriage is under attacks. Serious. Especially Christian marriages. Yes. Under serious onslaught. So if prayer took you into the marriage, maintain it with prayer. Maintain the marriage also with prayer. Amen. Some women, when they marry, that is all. Mensaka, mensaka, mensaka. And now you have become some car wavy in the house. Your dress is car. When you were not married, you were always in shape. Since you are our it is good by heart. We shape higher some car wavy. The last one. Verses 13. Hallelujah. I'm 
preaching shop. So. And Joshua overwhelmed Amalek and his people with a sword. Now listen to point number six, which is the final one. What happens in the spiritual will reflect in the physical. What happens in the spiritual will reflect in the physical. You will understand that even though Joshua conquered the Amalekites with a sword, but the real battle was fought by Moses on the mountaintop. It was because Moses prayed and won the battle in the realms of the spirit. That is why the reflection was seen on the battleground. That is why Joshua could overwhelm the Amalekites with a sword. Because the battle had been won spiritually. Are you with me, somebody? Yes. You are in, in school right now. It's a battle. For you, for you to graduate, Christ, it's a battle. Don't take things for granted. Don't think that you, you are uh, a whack. You know what a whack is? Don't think you are smart. Keep praying. Amen. So that you can graduate with honors. Because what happens in the spiritual would reflect in the physical. If you win the battle in the spiritual realm, it will manifest physically. But if you lose it in the spiritual realm, in the physical too, you will lose. And not just lose, but you will lose portal. You will lose portal. Anything you want to embark on in this life, bet it with prayer. Hallelujah. Young, Young Cho was asked also about what is the best practice of church growth. He said three, three things. Number one, prayer. Number two, prayer. Number three, prayer. Because it is the spiritual that controls the physical. You can't grow the church by just doing outreach and saying, oh, we are doing witnessing, so the church will grow. It doesn't go that way. Or we are doing, we are, we are putting in place certain mechanisms to make people, it will attract people to church. People are not attracted by just programs and some activities. It takes the Holy Ghost to bring people For Acts 2 47, the Bible says, Praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. It takes the Holy Ghost when you are prayed. In fact, the best form of evangelism is prayer. When you are praying and you have you have turned the hearts of people to God, when you go physically, it is easier. Don't Attempt evangelism when you have not prayed and you have not prayed enough. You will fail and fail for all. Don't attempt the business when you have not prayed and you have not prayed enough. If you want to enter into a business partnership with someone, don't enter into it. Until you have prayed and you have prayed enough into it, and you can get a go ahead in your spirit. Are you with me? You want to change your job? Don't just change the job, oh. pray and pray very well. Pray into it, get to know the mind of God before you change that job. Otherwise, it, it can become something for you, but. You want to travel outside the country and go and stay there for good? You got to pray and pray and pray to it very well. Whether it is the will of God. 
I know people living outside. And they are poorer than we who are in Africa. I'm telling you. By the grace of God, I travel small. I'm now coming to travel. The little I've gone, I've seen it. There are people living in Europe and they are struggling. And there are people living in Africa and they are doing well. You must win the battle in the realms of the spirit so that you will enjoy the harvest in the physical. Never attempt any great adventure when you have not prayed and prayed into it, when you have not won the battle in the realms of the spirit. Don't attempt any big thing when you have not prayed and prayed it because there are opposing forces in this life. We are fighting battles. But the good news is that the one who saved us won the battle 2,000 years ago. Oh, I thought I would hear a better shout here. Jesus won the victory for us 2,000 years ago. On the cross of Calvary, when he said, it is finished. The good news is that when we are fighting, we are not fighting for victory, but we are fighting from victory. And Joshua, overwhelmed, overpowered, prevailed and killed all the Amalekites with a sword because Moses had prayed. prayer for you. And may you win the battle of life. May God appoint you a Moses that you can win the battle of life. May God appoint you an arrow and a horse who will hold your hands up when you are tired and weary. May God provide helpers that when you are tired and weary, they will hold up your hands to continue the battle of life and that you will win. The other day Paul said, what shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? And he said that in all these things, we are more than conquerors. May you win the battle of life. May you win the battle of life. By the help of Jesus, by the help of Jesus, may you win the battles of life. Any battle you are confronted with, may the heart, may the Lord, may the host of angels be dispatched on your behalf that you will win the battle of life. I don't know the battle that is confronted with you, but with the help of Jehovah, you will win this battle. 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 May the Lord grant you that ability to overpower every enemy, every Amalekite that is fighting your progress, any Amalekite that is fighting your health, any Amalekite that is fighting your baby, any Amalekite that is fighting your relationship, any Amalekite that is fighting your wedding, any Amalekite that is fighting your job, any Amalekite that is fighting your business, any Amalekite that is fighting your traveling, any Amalekite that is fighting your next level. I decree and I declare by the sword of the Lord may you prevail over them. May you overwhelm them. May you overwhelm them by the sword of the Lord. May you overcome 
every enemy, anyone standing against your joy, anyone standing against your happiness in life, any entity, any man, woman, who has become an Amalekite, standing against your next level, may you overpower, may you overpower them, may you overpower them by the sword of the Lord. By the sword of Jehovah, may you overpower them. May you overpower them. Receive the grace. Receive the strength. Receive the power. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for listening. You can locate Charismatic Evangelistic Ministry at the Ogwa Teachers Hall, Bakano, Cape Coast.